Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic here, back with another Madden 21 video. In today's episode, we're going to be rebuilding the Cincinnati Bengals, the new edition of Chidabe Ouzie, Mike Hilton, and Trey Hendrickson. I personally don't know why the Bengals signed Trey Hendrickson over Carl Lawson. I guess it's because he had one good year in sacks. I personally don't think one good year, especially in your contract year, proves anything. I mean, look at David Johnson. Just because he played one good year, he got a massive contract, then he wasn't really that good after that. Don't sign someone after one good year. It's not worth it. But anyways, guys, this is the overlook of the team. Looking into it, Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Auden Tate, T. Higgins. Literally, the only thing we need to upgrade is definitely the O-line and tight end. And then this offense just needs to develop very young, very young. Uh, uh, very raw this team has a very bright future especially on defense too mike hilton should have been a young defensive line jesse bates is a stud just need to develop and improve at some positions and maybe get an offensive line and that would be my only concern with the Bengals in the future and i guess they could pick up probably some more linebackers in free agency but for right now i'm going to improve it in my own way such as signing mitchell schwartz right off the bat right tackle perfect 94 overall superstar development he is currently not signed to any team that i am recording this on so as of now i'm putting him on this team in my own image as as what i want and i'm surprised larry fitz frank gore some of those people are still not picked up in free agency but trey turner is going to be the first guy i get and then i'm probably going to get mitchell schwartz as well I mean, I did get him in my last rebuild, but he's here. Might as well. 94 overall superstar development. What is there not to love other than maybe his age? Absolutely perfect for this team and this O-line. So other than that, let's get into the trades. Here we are with the first trade as we were trading away. Trey Waynes, bunch of cap room. Ricardo Allen. I know they just got him in free agency. He's taking up cap room. I have Von Bell. I don't need him. I don't know why they got him. Six round pick for Dallas Goddard, the tight end need. Next, we're trading away our tight end, who took a bunch of cap because we just got Dallas Goddard, a center, and a third-round pick for Chris Lindstrom, star development, right guard, super young, and a fifth-round pick. And just like that, we've revamped this entire offensive line. It looks absolutely amazing. This offense seriously just needs to develop. It is so young, so raw. It is absolutely amazing to see a team like this. And looking into it defensively, we just need linebackers and, again, to develop. That just development is our only problem with this team. So, anyways, let's get to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark coming off a bye week as we are here to face the Steelers in Week 10. We are 3-5, and five, bottom of the division. Not surprised considering how low overall of a team we are. Even though we are young studs, we still need to develop, as I said before. Everyone here, I do not have an interest in signing, especially Josh Bynes. And actually, Mitchell Schwartz and Trey Turner are both here from free agency. I can't negotiate with them right now so other than that i would have to wait until the end of the season to deal with that so for right now i'm gonna upgrade expert scouting and coach xp and other than that guys i'd say it's time to jump into the playoffs here we are into the here we are in the playoffs as we obviously didn't make the playoffs coming off a loss to the baltimore ravens finishing bottom of the division at eight and eight kind of had a comeback on the second half of the season not that great joe burrow did pretty solid though with the team he had six best offensively 22nd defensively that's kind of surprising joe burrow 4,000 yards 30 tds 16 interceptions a little bit too much joe mixon was not that great in touchdowns but he was pretty good in yards but i would rather have touchdowns than i would have yards on tate over a thousand yards seven tds pretty good season for him ball distribution was great as well and defensively von bell with the most tackles on team most tackles for a loss 11 for dj reader most sacks on team seven for sam hubbard most interceptions on the team three for jesse bates most safeties on the team is going to be zero and defensive touchdowns on the team is going to be zero so anyways guys apart from that i'd say that it's time to move into the offseason here we are in the offseason. Of course, the Browns win the Super Bowl every year. That's just how it is. As they beat the Panthers, Baker Mayfield wins MVP too because that's just logic, you know, uh, logical that that would happen. But looking into the retirements, we're looking into the AFC North. Looks like our fullback retired. Oh, no, major loss. It looks like we're going to lose our 54 overall fullback. The series is over. We can't do this anymore. Anyways, enough of me joking around. Everyone on this team I don't want other than Mitchell Schwartz, who hasn't regressed even one overall, but he hasn't progressed either. So I am going to resign him to a five-year deal just to spread out his contract he doesn't want to stay with the team i might tag him that was actually relatively cheap that i saw that and i'm going to up the salary on trey turner as well and he resigns with the team as he will stay here and only nine million to tag mitchell schwartz that's cheaper than a red regular contract for a superstar development uh traits 
offensive tackle. That's absolutely great for him. I definitely want to keep that around. So anyways, this is what the team looks like. Again, development is the only thing we need on offense. Defensively, I wish Trey Hendrickson had star development, but Von Bell now has superstar development. I don't know how he got that. It wasn't really impressive on the stat sheet other than the most tackles. So anyways, guys, on that, let's get into free agency. Here we are after free agency. We got Bud Dupree, kind of temporary. Will Lutz, Gus the Bus as a depth player, and Jordan Lewis as a defensive back as well. So he will be our number three defensive back, and we are complete in the secondary, in my opinion. And I think we just need a left guard, and then we're complete on offense. Just need to develop, like I always say. And uh, defensively, we need linebackers still. That's still kind of a problem. And we do have our kicker for the future, so I guess that may or may not affect simulation. So in the draft, we're picking up a left outside linebacker, Marco Terrell, 72 overall hidden development. Definitely, definitely a valuable asset to the team. So let's get back. So here we are with the overlook of the team. As I did pick up a left guard in the draft, he's just not that very good. Hopefully he will progress decently. So I'm going to start Terrell over this other guy that I drafted. I'm going to put D'Angelo Bennett the rookie into middle linebacker maybe he can progress and maybe he could get start of him and then i'd probably put him at middle linebacker if he did get start of him i definitely would start him at linebacker but right now he currently does not have that so i think i'll just maybe keep him as depth but he could win rookie of the year so yeah i'm actually going to start him and i will start that guy as well and again just a super young raw team a development needs to happen so anyways guys let's get to the midseason here we are at the midseason mark, coming off a loss to the Kansas City Chiefs as we are 1-7 this time. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. We got better, but we have a worse record. Browns, of course, are 6-1, and one, top of the division. Mitchell Schwartz is here. Obviously, want to keep him around. 94 overall, superstar development. I want to look at the other contracts first because he is an offensive lineman. And Jesse Bates here is more important, in my opinion, as he resigns. Dallas Goddard, we just traded for him. Of course, we need him back. Extend his contract, up the salary, and he resigns with the team. Auden Tate, I guess he'll be a good wide receiver three. I don't think he's necessary, but I'll keep him just in case. Sam Hubbard, what do you got? No, I don't think so. Six million a year and you're not even 80 overall. Uh, I don't want that on my team, honestly. Uh, I think I could maybe find someone better in free agency. I don't know, but either way, I would rather spend that $6 million on Mitchell Schwartz and help pay for his contract than pay you $6 million a year to be a below-average pass rusher and isn't even 80 overall. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on that one. I don't want that at all, as I was saying before. I said that too much. Let's just jump into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs coming off a win to the Chicago Bears. We did not make the playoffs once again finishing third in the division seven and nine worse than last season joe burrow did slightly worse than last season as well but fifth best offense in the league and 12th best defense how does that make sense how we had fifth best offense 12th best defense but went seven and nine 19 interceptions is not okay joe mixon did slightly worse than last year tyler boyd one yard away from the thousand yard season ball distribution was eh, doesn't really matter considering the team wasn't that good. Logan Wilson with the most tackles on the team, most tackles for a loss, eight for Marco Terrell, most sacks, seven for Bud Dupree, which is not enough from him. Two interceptions from Mike Hilton. Safeties on the team is going to be one for Bud Dupree. Most defensive touchdowns is zero. So not great at all. But anyways, guys, let's get into the offseason. Let's see how the Browns win. And once again, it's the Browns and Panthers in the Super Bowl, and the Browns win again, even though Cam Newton wins the, wins the MVP of the league because Madden simulation logic is just elite, guys. AFC North, Big Ben retires on the Bengals. I know all the Steelers fans in my comments are going to be like, oh, no, it doesn't really matter. It's simulation, guys. It's going to happen eventually. Sam Hubbard, 78 overall, now wants $8 million a year. Yeah, no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> Went up one overall and thinks he's a stud, and he didn't even perform five sacks on my team, I think. I think, yeah, Bud Dupree had seven. I'm not paying you $8 million a year to be underperforming. So offensively, Looks great. Uh, defensively, only Terrell only had star, so a little bit of a letdown, but it's better than normal, I guess. And we really need to work on the draft, I guess, and a little bit or free agency. So let's just get into that right now. Here we are in free agency picking up J.K. Scott. Nobody touched him, so I might as well give him a horrible contract. And I got Fosad Alucan, moving from outside linebacker to inside linebacker, and he's good. So now we're picking up another outside linebacker who I'm going to move to edge in replacement of Sam Hubbard. And he's the same overall, and he doesn't ask for $8 million. So now we're picking up J.J. Shaw, 70 overall, hidden development. Got him in a super late rounds. So he's just going to be a depth middle linebacker. 
So this is the team after the draft, and once again, just super, super young. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but this team is so set up. It just needs to progress a little bit faster than what I would normally like, but I moved that guy down to the edge, and he doesn't ask for $8 million a year, and he's the same overall. So he should perform around the same, but he's a lot cheaper. So anyways, guys, I'm not, let's get to the midseason. Here we are at the midseason mark, coming off a win to the Baltimore Ravens as we are 6 and. That makes no sense. We went from three and five to one and seven to six and one. That's not a lot of logic, even though we didn't even have that great of an off season. Mike Hilton is here, 85 overall. He will start regression in this season, but I still want to keep him around. Even if he does start regression, he he will still be a valuable piece throughout the rest of the rebuild. Von Bell, he will start as well, but he's still valuable, even though he he won't go below an 80, but he's still valuable in my opinion. Chidobe Awuzie starts regression next year, but he's still valuable. Like I said before, Trey Hendrickson, I don't think I want back. I can pick up the exact same guy like him, like I did in the previous draft with the same overall. And I don't really have to give him a contract. 27 years old, starts regression. And oh yeah, no, not that contract. You're not getting 9 million a year to be underperforming like the rest of them. You're just like Sam Hubbard and I don't want you. So let's just jump into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs, actually making the playoffs, coming off a win to the Steelers, as we are 12-4. and four. Well, That's surprising. Top of the division. We actually beat the Browns in the division. That's new. Joe Burrow. Yards, I could personally care less about. Touchdowns is what I love to see, and he performed that in touchdowns. 3,800 yards, 40 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, a little bit too much still, but 40 touchdowns is amazing. 12 touchdowns for Joe Mixon, 1,500 yards, amazing season. Ball distribution was great. Auden Tate had 15 touchdowns as well. Foa Sato Lou Khan with the most touch tackles for on the team, tackles for a loss, 14 for Akeem uh, Gaither. I, I, don't, I don't know how to say his name. Bud Dupree, 11 and a half sacks, five interceptions for Von Bell is great. Safeties on the team is going to be zero, and defensive touchdowns on the team is going to be zero. So overall, a great season for us. Defensively, we were pretty sure we were like 22nd in the NFL, so that's not great. But still, this team looking great. So let's see if we can move on to the divisional rounds. And we do, but of course, we have to play the Browns. And I'm going to simulate this. We're most likely going to lose because, you know, it's the Browns and they win literally every single year. Yeah, would you look at that? We lost 24-7. to How am I not surprised? I can't wait to see them in the Super Bowl. So let's get to the offseason. Somehow they lost to the Raiders in the AFC Championship. I'm surprised by that. And the Washington football team wins the Super Bowl. I don't know what gods here quarterback they have, but I remember whenever Dwayne Haskins was in simulation, Dwayne Haskins was a god in simulation for the football team. But uh, he's not on really any team. He's second string for the Steelers now. So uh, they weren't they? A, yeah, they're simulation gods sometimes whenever they start Dwayne Haskins, I believe. But I don't know if he's still on the team. Dwayne Haskins is simulation god. And speaking of simulation god, Joe Burrow is now a superstar X Factor because of his 40 touchdowns. And I gave him all of his abilities that I wanted to off camera. Joe Mixon had a beast season, 15 touchdowns, 1,500 yards. How could you not give him superstar X Factor beast? On tape, 15 touchdowns, now has superstar development. Another beast defensively looking into it. Bud Dupree here with superstar development after his 11 and a half sack season. I don't really think he should get one even though he had that, but the game gave it to him, so I just let it happen. And Von Bell got superstar X Factor now. I'm glad I re-signed them. But uh, anyways, guys, enough of me uh, blabbing my mouth about this. Uh, we're going to have to replace Trey Hendrickson, and some of the defense has regressed, but I guess we'll do that in free agency, so let's just get into it. So I'd rather have Matthew Ioannidis by far than Trey Hendrickson. Signed him. And Rashawn Gary, nobody went after him. So it gave him a horrendous deal, and he's way better than Trey Hendrickson as well. So in the draft, we're going all out. It's the final season. DJ Reader takes $11 million in cap. He gets paid more than Matthew Ioannidis. He's not as good. Stephon Gilmore, and we trade away Bennett and a third-round pick. So great value, in my opinion. Next, we're trading away a first, a second, and a 77 overall outside linebacker for Elton Jenkins. This is more than a fair trade, so I don't want to hear complaints in the comments. So this is the overlook of the team after the draft. Absolutely stacked on offense. Absolutely stacked. I, I guess overall is the main factor for simulation, but still everything stacked. Not even a normal development on offense. Defensively, Rashawn Gary should definitely put up numbers because he is an 86 overall, even though he does have only normal development. So anyways, guys, apart from that, let's get to the midseason. Here we are at the midseason mark, coming off a win to the Browns, surprisingly. 5-3, second division behind the 5-2 Baltimore Ravens. And we are in the re-signing period, but just like every season in the final season, I don't need to re-sign anybody because it is the final season because we're not going to get into another season, so let's just get into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs. 
Browns coming off a loss to the Seattle Seahawks, but we are 10 and 6 here to face the 12 and 4 Las Vegas Raiders, third in the division, very highly contested division. Joe Burrow, I like the touchdowns as always, sixth best offense in the league and 13th best defense. Yards doesn't really matter to me, but statistically pretty solid. Touchdowns is what matters, and he did a pretty good job. But Joe Mixon had a great amount of touchdowns, an amazing amount of yards. Auden Tate, great amount of yards, pretty solid amount of touchdowns. Tyler Boyd, great amount of yards as well. Fed them the ball mostly. Fosada Lucan with the most tackles on the team, but the by a wide margin. Tackles for a loss, 11 for Fosada Lucan. Sacks on the team is going to be 13 for Rashawn Gary. That's what I'm talking about. Screw you, Trey Hendrickson. Three interceptions for Fosada Lucan. Safeties on the team is going to be one for Fosada Lucan. Defensive touchdowns, zero. So Fosada Lucan really tore it up this year. Rashawn Gary, 13 sacks. Way better than Trey Hendrickson, and he's way cheaper. Definitely, definitely want him over Trey Hendrickson any day of the week for that contract and for that kind of season. Trey Hendrickson didn't even put up double-digit sacks. I don't even think he was close to doing that on our team. So we beat the Raiders. We're playing the Bills, obviously. I think it was, yes, and we beat them. Here to face the Browns, I have to hop into this game. It's a championship game, AFC championship, and I don't want to lose to the Browns again because, again, simulation gods, man. So here we are against the Browns, 28-20 in the fourth quarter. Four minutes remaining, 35-20 to as we start to pull away. 42-20, to pounding it on in the fourth quarter. 42-26 to is your final score as we move on. So here we are in the Super Bowl here to face the 9-7 Green Bay Packers. And that is surprising because it seems like Aaron Rodgers can only get to the conference championship and then never do anything after that. But looking into it, offensively, we look the same. And defensively, how did Foa Sadaluwakan not get superstar X-Factor? Rashawn Gary did get star development because of his 13th sack season. Not surprised. I don't know how Jesse Bates got superstar X-Factor. I might have missed that last season if he didn't have it already. But apparently he does have it now. So I'm okay with that. And Jesse Bates, 98 overall superstar X-Factor. Team looks absolutely amazing. So anyways, guys, apart from that, it is time to hop into this game against the Green Bay Packers. So I was hopping in just for a little bit, and we are here in the second quarter, 7-2-3 against the Green Bay Packers, 14-2-3. Ending of the second quarter is coming soon, 21-10 at the end of the half, 21-10 basically throughout the entire third quarter, almost a score, 28-10 at the end of the third quarter, 35-10 as we continue to pour it on, 42-10, 42-17, two minutes left in this game. This game is bagged out, 42-24. And Chidabe Awuzie, seven tackles, zero sacks, so one defensive touchdowns, and two picks is their Super Bowl MVP. That was honestly well deserved, and he was a free agent and kind of the title of this video. So, anyways, guys, other than that, that is going to be it for this rebuild. Definitely a successful one. Chidabe Awuzie with the Super Bowl MVP. Mike Hilton, Chidabe Awuzie, Trey Hendrickson were all new additions to this free agency team. And I guess Trey Turner. And Mitchell Schwartz was too, but not in real life. Just in my fantasy style, just because nobody picked him up yet. And they need an O-line. But anyways, guys, if you did find this useful or if you get, did find this entertaining, make sure you like and or subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. And other than that, guys, I thank you guys all for watching. And apart from that, I'll see you guys all in the next one.